everybody, it's Nina. Thanks for joining me today for a new Studio Monday video. Today I want to feature five different ways that you can do foiling techniques using some fun products from ThermaWeb and Gina K Designs. I'm also going to be using quite a few products from Simon Says Stamp and a few other things that I really wanted to use from a few other companies. Now I've started off by creating this very own stencil. This is a homemade stencil that I made using the Simon Says Stamp Snowburst Collage. And I die cut this across a piece of white cardstock multiple times to create this pattern. I'm going to take some ThermaWeb Transfer Gel and I'm going to spread the gel over top of this stencil. This is going to transfer that gel through the negative areas of the stencil and allow me to have that design of that Snowburst Collage onto this dark colored cardstock. This is blue violet cardstock from Simon. Now when you're applying this transfer gel, you want to apply it with a nice smooth coating because you don't want to have any ridges or anything like that through the stenciling. So you want to get it as smooth as possible. It's not going to be perfect, but you want to get it as smooth as you possibly can. Once you have that transfer gel spread across your paper, you can see the beautiful design of the Snowburst collage that we have now on our dark colored cardstock. You're going to want to let that sit and dry for quite a while. I let it sit overnight. Now at the same time I also created this other stencil design using the Hero Arts Leaf and Berry stencil. It's a beautiful Christmas stencil. Now with this transfer gel, this gel will dry clear. That's how you know it's ready to be used and foiled with. So while it has that milky appearance right now, it won't be milky when it's ready to be foiled. It will be perfectly clear. So I'm going to apply this transfer gel through this stencil as well, again getting it as smooth as possible, and then I'll remove the stencil and you can see we have that beautiful leaf and berry design now transferred onto our cardstock. So now it's the next day and my things are completely dry. You can see that they are perfectly clear on our dark colored cardstocks or any other colored cardstock you want to use. And now I can go ahead and start foiling. So I've got this beautiful kind of sequin looking glitter foil paper from Gina K and ThermoWeb and it is so gorgeous. I love this paper. Now I'm going to put this into a sandwich that I'm going to run through my laminator. And I found that the best way to get a perfect laminated impression is to have extra layers inside of your sandwich. So I've got a piece of parchment paper that's my carrier sheet. Then I have two layers of regular 100 pound cardstock. Then I've got my cardstock that I'm going to be transferring the foil onto and the foil on top of that. I'll show you that again in a second. So I've run that through my laminator and now that I have it run through it, I can now remove the foil off of my cardstock. And the result is stunning. Look how perfect that foiling is. Because we have that extra layer of cardstock, we've got two pieces of extra cardstock in there, that's giving pressure inside of the laminator, which is allowing the foil paper to transfer onto your cardstock even better. So here again, I've got those two pieces of cardstock. This is just some white cardstock. I've got my piece of cardstock that has my transfer gel design on that we did the stenciling with. Then I've got the foil paper, this time I've got some glittery stars, and I've got then everything sandwiched in between some parchment paper. I'm going to run that through my laminator once again, and then this time I'll be able to remove it out and peel off that foil, and you'll again see that we have beautifully transferred foil design onto our cardstock. So when you're doing your foiling, make sure you add some extra layers of cardstock. You might wanna practice to see how many layers thick you can get through your machine. I found that two was perfect for my laminator. And then you can see we get a great foiled impression using that transfer gel. Now another way you can use foil to do some foiling is to not use any heat transferring at all and instead use double-sided adhesive. So I have these double-sided adhesive sheets from ThermoWeb and I'm going to attach the one side onto a piece of white cardstock. These sheets come in really, really big sheets. So you get a lot of adhesive from a pack of this. So after I put that onto my cardstock, I'll remove the other backing sheet, and this time I'm going to lay this into the foil. Once you've laid it down into the foil, you're gonna to wanna to head and press this really good, burnishing that foil into that adhesive, because you wanna make sure it sticks to that adhesive really nicely. You may have some air bubbles, but if you just take a soft cloth or even your sleeve, like I'm doing here, and rub over those little air bubbles, that'll push those pockets of air out of there, and it'll transfer the foil down onto your paper perfectly. So now I can remove that foil off of my adhesive and you can see we have this beautifully transferred down onto our cardstock. 
Now I'm going to take this die from Penny Black. This is no two are alike. It's a beautiful snowflake die. And I've run that through my Big Shot machine and then attached that piece onto a piece of white cardstock. And you can see the stunning results. Another way you can do foil transfer is to take some toner sheets. This time I have some toner sheets from ThermoWeb and I'm going to trim this down to be a little bit larger than this die that I have from Do Crafts. It's a beautiful floral burst collage. So again, I'm gonna create that same sandwich of two layers of cardstock, and then I'll be able to put my toner sheet of this die cut that I have, and also my foil, which is also from ThermoWeb, and I'll be able to sandwich that in between two, a piece of parchment paper. Once I've run it through, again, I'll remove the foil, and you can see the amazing results and how perfect your foiling is because again, we've got that extra pressure. So that's really helping your foil transfer down onto your projects. Okay, so let's talk about some of the cards that I made using those foiled techniques that I showed you in the video. I wanna show you how I finished off the cards and I kept the cards fairly simple so that way they were easy for you to replicate because I wanted the video to be about the technique, not so much about making the cards. So. I'll talk about quickly how I made each of the cards and because I made them fairly simple, I'm hoping that they're easy for you to then replicate after doing the techniques. So on this card, I used a few of our new Making Spirits Bright Release products. You can see this gorgeous foiled star, which is from the Holy Stars die set. I used the largest one there. And then I actually did create a little outline of that star by taking the die and what I did was is I placed this down, face down like this, onto a piece of vellum. So cutting side down, I traced it with a pencil and then just fussy cut out that traced area. And that creates a star that is larger than the die cut star. It makes a nice little uh, relief off of the busy background that we have here. Now I really love this background because it really reminds me of a night sky and stars and the clean and simple feel allows this design to work because we've got so much going on with the foiling the clean and simple look really makes the card come to life. So I also used our beautiful new Rejoice die. This comes with both the die itself and also the outline. And I cut both of those from some beautiful foil cardstock from Tonic Studios because I didn't have a foil paper that I was able to use that was in that nice purple tone and I wanted a purple. So keep that in mind when you're creating cards and you don't have foil in a color that you want, Try checking out some foil card stocks and you can create the same effect. And you can see the look is seamless. Everything looks foiled. So this was a really fun card to make and I love the gorgeous rich tones in this card. Okay, card number two. This one here, this background is my absolute favorite. Out of all the cards and all of the foiling techniques that I did today, this one just takes the cake for me. I love that snowflake background which is this new no two are alike die from Penny Black. Look how detailed this is, and then look how detailed this background turned out. I love it. So I also took this beautiful sentiment, which is from Honey Bee Stamps Large Thanks die. So I just die cut that from some gold foiled cardstock. I added the little outline around it as well and popped that up off the card and added the sentiment from this new stamp set from our Making Spirits Bright release, which is called Stained Glass Greetings. So this is again, a very simple card, but you'll also notice I added a little bit of embellishing to the centers of the snowflakes. I added just a few little gems to the centers of each snowflake and the, it's not very noticeable, but when it catches the light, you notice that there's something a little bit special on each of those snowflakes. So keep that in mind when you create a card like this. Something very clean and simple when you add small details like those centers makes a huge impact on the finished design. Okay, another card featuring that beautiful thanks die from Honey Bee Stamps is this one here. Look at that foiling, it's perfect for fall or any time of the year, but I love those colors. That foil is so beautiful from ThermoWeb. So I used that with this beautiful die here that cuts out this great little outline. This is from Duke Crafts. And I really love the detail of this background die. Now I also, again, like I said, use that sentiment and put that right in the center there. And then the supporting sentiment came from our new Kind Flowers stamp set, which is from our most recent card kit for November. And I really love how that sentiment is so clean and simple and goes nicely with this whole entire card. I did pop up this outline piece, this background, 
off of my card using just a little bit of foam tape. So you can see there's a slight relief off of that orange cardstock. And that just gives the background a little bit of interest, but you could definitely hear that flat down as well. So there's a couple of options for how you can finish off this card. All right, another fall theme we've got here is this one here. I love those beautiful leaves, don't you? That is so pretty and really easy to make. You would not believe that that came probably from that same scrap of paper that I had from, left over from this card that I had made using that beautiful foiled background. So these multicolored leaves, minus the red, are all created from the negative leftover pieces that I had from creating this background. So the red leaves came from just some simple red foil from Gina K Designs. The other foil is from Thermoweb, and I really love the look. Now, the dyes that I used in this, I first created the tree using Simon's new Bear Tree Oval Collage. So you can see the beautiful tree here. It cuts out a little oval with the tree cut out as well. So this is a negative. Then after that, I took the beautiful leaf collage die from Memory Box and cut out these leaves to create the leaves in my trees. And then after that, I also added some grass using a Lawn Fawn Grassy Hillsides die and a Blessings sentiment from My Favorite Things. Now, you'll notice also that there's just a little bit of texture in the background here. That I created using the Sketched Lines stencil from Ultino, and I ran this through like an embossing folder onto my card. And because this is a clean and simple card, I wanted there to be a little bit of texture in the background so that it had a little bit of interest and wasn't a flat piece of cardstock. So by doing that with a stencil, you can create a really beautiful textured look that doesn't distract from the rest of your card. And again, it lets that foiling just stand out off of this card beautifully. Okay, one last card. This one I think is the most intense with the foiling, but it is so beautiful. And look how shiny and just glittery. I love that glittery looking uh, foil in the background there from Thermoweb and Gina K Designs. Okay, so the products that I used on this card, again, this is another very simple card to make, so I think you could really replicate this very easily. So I used, as you know, the leaf and berry stencil from Hero Arts with the transfer gel from Thermoweb, and I, we had transferred that onto the cardstock and let that dry and then foiled it. After that, I then took some more foil and pressed that down onto some toner paper. I ended up with some beautiful green, and I was able to die cut that using these beautiful trees from Simon Says Stamp. Now with those trees, I then popped them up off of my card using some foam tape, and I added a sentiment from the Happy Christmas stamp set. So I went ahead and used this Merry Christmas sentiment here. Then for some decoration on the trees, I added a few sequins and clear droplets. I really love how these sequin confettis have that nice solid appearance, so they really remind you of Christmas balls. Okay, so that's a quick look at all of the cards that we made with some of the fun foiling techniques in this video. I hope it's inspired you to break out your foiling projects and your foils and toner sheets and all of those other fun products that you can use to create foiled cards and do some foiling for your holiday cards or any cards in general. So thanks so much for watching this video. I will be back soon with another one. And until then, thanks for watching. Bye.